What's going on, guys? Well, welcome to The Corporate Citizen. This is Glendon Cameron, where we teach you how to set up businesses. And today's lesson is going to be very, very important. Why the financially thirsty will never, ever win in business. Now, there are many of you in the comments that have told me that if I finance a car, I would realize more profit. And I've seen this comment. Uh, other day, someone was like, you could finance a Tesla at 3.5% interest and the profit would be more than the interest. And this is very, very telling comment. This tells me that this person doesn't have a business and this also tells me that if this person ran the business, they would be in trouble very shortly. Because let me go ahead and give you the breakdown. Let me give you the, the framework of how I set up Mac Daddy Autos. LLC, EIN, business checking, business credit card, and a capital investment of half a million dollars. Now, I am not going to see profit until I get my original investment back. I do see revenue, and this is one of the things that many of you financially thirsty people get confused. You feel that you could go out and finance a car, create revenue, and then use that revenue to fund your lifestyle because you don't know how to build a business. So let me go ahead and explain to you, Lucy. Let me explain to you, Lucy, how you build a business. Now, I've invested over half a million dollars in this car rental business, and I do not expect to start taking money out of the business to slide in my pocket for a year or more. Let me say that again. I do not expect to start taking money out of the business for personal use for a year or more. And that's how I drew it up. Actually, it's gonna be longer than a year because my year actually started this month. But if you know, I've been doing this for a month. So we're talking 16 months before I start to pull money out and put into my pocket. Now, why is that? Let's examine amazon.com. Amazon.com did not make a profit for 14 years, but they were making revenue that they used this revenue to reinvest back into Amazon.com. And this is what I'm going to do with my revenue. Once we, I figure October, we should be finished with all the repairs and all this stuff because I bought all of these used cars. And that money's gonna sit in the operating account. And then I'm gonna go out and purchase more cars. So October through next October, I would be purchasing more cars. And then once I get to, I have a few standards, which could, could change. You know, my goal is to have 100 cars by next October. I'm currently at 32 which means I need to get 68 more cars. And one of the things I'm learning since I'm building this business the correct way is assumptions may change. Uh, I might start pulling money out of the business at 75 cars. It just depends on how the numbers look, what's the gross revenue, what the projections look like. But because I am not financially thirsty, we're gonna talk about that. So many of you are financially thirsty that you want to start a business on Monday and you want to be paid on Friday. That is not how it works for long-term durable businesses. It doesn't work that way. And this is how I know that if you're a financially thirsty person that like, if you're financially thirsty, you should start a service business a cleaning company, a car detailing business, a security agency, something where you can actually do some work and get paid money very, very quickly. 
We're going to be talking about that in the corporate papers. We're going to have a service business module that's coming very, very soon. Because if you're financially thirsty, if you're a person like I have YouTube company, I have the online course company, and every now and then I do consults. I really don't push consults that much. And then I have affiliate marketing. So I have four streams of income. So I could live the way that I'm currently living off my YouTube money. My YouTube money is six to $10,000 per month. So that would, you know, since I don't have normal people bills, I don't have car payments. That's huge. That's huge. I don't have car payments. Uh, my company pays for the house. So I can easily live off my smallest month of YouTube money very easily. And this is why I am not financially thirsty. See, here's the thing, you guys, and I, I see it in the comments. And some of you, I'm not going to say you're stupid. I'm not going to be that dismissive. I'm going to say that you're unseasoned and you don't know what you're talking about because you have assumptions. Just like I got in the car rental business, I had a certain set of assumptions. And I took these assumptions to the marketplace and the marketplace is like, eh, we don't like those assumptions. So I had to change what I was doing. And one of the things that, you know, I, I'll, I'll share with you, I've had to change this because my first set of assumptions was I was going to spend $150,000 buy some cars, put them on the rental platform, and then after a year, sell those cars. Then I went to stage two, it's like 150,000 is not gonna get me enough cars. There's a certain thing, you need a certain amount of scale to reach a certain level of income. So I invested more money. And then I moved it to where I would rent my current fleet for two years. Then I was met with another set of marketplace dynamics. I will tell you, the marketplace has slowed down. I had to reprice my fleet. So that was another marketplace reality. It's like, oh, okay. And because after my first round of buying cars, which some of them I bought wrong, and I started to buy cars correctly, so buying these cars correctly gave me the flexibility to still lower my price and still get that car paid off in a year. Hence why I was going to sell in a year. Now I'm at the position where I'm gonna rent these cars, my current fleet, I'm gonna rent these cars for three years. Now why three years? First year, get the car paid off, get the repairs paid off. I'm buying used cars. Uh, when people trade in used cars, they don't fix them. I'm having to do tires. I'm having to do air conditioning refreshing. I'm having to do oil changes. I'm having to do starters. I'm having to do alternators. So by giving myself a three-year window that this car would enter my fleet and it would stay in the fleet for three years and after three years, I will flip it. Then the first year getting the car paid off, getting the maintenance issues handled, then year two is profit, then year three is profit. And then I could sell this car for $5,000 and that would all be profit. So that's where, I, this is the evolution of running a real business. And many of you are financially thirsty that you think you're gonna start a business. Now we'll say, if you start a service business, you can make money very quickly. If you started a handyman service, you started a painting company, you started a credit repair company, you can make money very, very quickly. But in the terms of the car rental business, if you buy a car, which is a business asset, and you don't have that car paid off, until you pay that car off, at that point, the car becomes a profitable asset. Until that car is paid off, and once again, many of you could trick off and misuse the money and go ahead and finance these cars and take this money and slide it into your pocket. Let me make a prediction that many of the larger Toro hosts who have financed their cars will be facing bankruptcy as winter comes 
Because what Toro is going to do is it's going to keep slowing down. It's not going to just slow down and go back up. Why? The stimulus money is out the economy. I'm starting to see that Uber drivers have slowed down. DoorDash has slowed down. Uber Eats has slowed down. Everything has slowed down because the stimulus money is being ex evacuated out of the economy and people. And once again, when I say slow down, the economy is going back to normal. The economy is going back to normal. So it's not like a slowdown in a traditional sense, like if the economy was normal, then it really slowed down. That would be very detrimental. But what we're experiencing is the reality of marketplace dynamics. Because uh, I repriced the fleet and the Porsche is going out today. The Range Rover went out yesterday. And this weekend, I have a feeling that I will rent out a lot of cars. But once again, this comes from actually buying. You know, someone was saying that there is a little demand for old cars and you should give people what they want. In, in line with my video where I'm not starting a business I don't enjoy, I am not getting in the business where I got to go out and spend a million dollars to get million dollars <throat> would get me 30 cars, 30 brand new $30,000 cars and spend $30,000 for a car to rent out for 40, 50 bucks a day. I'm not doing that. That's not exciting. That doesn't really get me motivated. So I will continue to buy used cars because on Turo, that notion is absolutely correct. People want some fancy shit that they cannot afford to buy. 100%. On hire car, I have a number of 2008, 2008 Lexus. Uh, I bought that car on a Tuesday. I put it on the platform Tuesday night. Wednesday, it rented out. It's been gone ever since. So I have found out that I can buy very nice late model cars, put them on the platform, and these cars are not costing me $30,000. Because, see, I'm a real businessman. I crunch numbers every day. And I like the math on a car that I can buy for ten dollars to $12,000, rent that for one year, get it paid off, and then year two and year three are nothing but profit. I like that math. I don't like spending $30,000 and then having to spend three years trying to be made whole again because it's going to take three years of rentals to pay that car off and then I would have to rent that car out for four or five years to see a profit. I don't like those numbers. Don't like them at all. You might like those numbers. Oh, that's right. You're tricking off on the money. You're not properly managing your fleet because if you finance cars and you can, there's a number of, there's a certain limit of cars where they will finance you. And what I've consistently been seeing is 15, 12 to 15. I've seen this, and this is where the most cars that you can finance in your name. Now, if you were to pay off these cars quickly, then you could finance and build a bigger fleet much quickly. If you are not tricking off with your money because you're financially thirsty. Once again, True business people know there's an upfront investment and they're not going to see a return of capital for a year or two or three or four or five. This is how real business men and women get down. This is how real businesses are built. So, you know, since now I've extended the runway to three years, you know, I'm breathing a little easier and I've actually added, like if I spend ten to $12,000 for a car, in my mind mentally, I've set aside 2000 for repairs. Because I know because it's going to need tires, it's going to need this, it's going to need that. Because people trade in cars versus fixing them. I heard on Dave Ramsey, there was this girl who was talking about her car needed some stuff. And she was going to trade it in versus fixing it. And this is where people are because people in America don't like fixing stuff unless they're forced to fix stuff like appliance repair. Why people choosing appliance repair? Because they don't have enough money to buy something new. They're forced to fix it. And this is why they fix it. Uh, the people who are forced to fix cars are not in a position to buy a new car. If they're in a position to buy a new car, that's what they will do. That's what they will do. So once again, this is how you structure a real business. 
and Toro, which is a template business, and it will go referring to my video, uh, template businesses are going to be saturated in six to 12 months. I feel that that may even move faster. You know why? Because the economy is slowing down and you're going to have even more people throwing their cars on Toro, not to make money, but to make their car payment. They're going to be putting their cars on Toro and they're not going to even care about making a profit. If their car payment is 700 bucks and they can make 400 or $500 on Toro, goodness gracious, that's a good thing. And that's going to be your competition. That's what you're going to be competing against. You're going to be competing against people who are not trying to make a profit. They're just trying to defray the cost of ownership of their car. And that's going to be a really big issue. You will see rearing this ugly head in the next six to 12 months because as the economy slows down and some other things you're going to see a lot of these jobs that people don't want they're going to be begging for these jobs in six to 12 months if there is not another stimulus and it doesn't look like there's enough stimulus package in the in the works it is i i was really shocked at how much the removal of the stimulus money and that's why it was called stimulus money, because it did stimulate the economy. It stimulated the economy greatly. How much the removal of the stimulus money impacted the economy. Uh, I had five people on Turo cancel their rentals because they don't have the money to travel. They don't this. Once again, is you see this trickle down situation as money is leaving the economy. It's the stimulus money. Because see, the economy has money in it. The economy has this normal operating revenue. And the addition of the stimulus money hyperinflated certain segments of the economy. So I expect to see a big slowdown. Like once again, I repriced my fleet and it worked. Now my cars are renting again because one of the things I did, and this is something you have to do if you're a real business owner, you have to put yourself in the position of your customers. And one of the things is like, you know, I had cars uh, 70, 90, 100 bucks a day and they would rent out occasionally, but I don't want occasional rentals. I want consistent rentals. And I've got one $70 car that's rented out for um, three months and I feel the Porsche is going to stay out. And then I repriced everything else, but because I bought these cars correctly and I didn't pay too much, I'm able to lower the price and still hit my target of getting this car paid off in a year because I bought it correctly. And this is reminiscent of my storage auction days. You make your money when you buy. So I'm not, you know, I've learned my lesson. I've been doing this four months, four and a half months today, and I've learned how to buy cars. And when I get my dealer's license, oh man, I will be able to buy even better and get better deals on my cars. And that's something that I'm working on September and October, working on getting my dealer's license and getting all that stuff situated. And at that point, I'll be able to go to auction and buy cars. And that's going to be a game changer, just like the kill switch. And if you notice, I have, you know, it's kind of funny since I now have kill switches on the majority of the fleet, I rarely have to use them. It's kind of funny. It's like I had some people I thought I was going to have to flip the switch on and they just brought the car back. I don't threaten people. So it's, it's kind of funny. But this is a lesson to all of you people out here who don't operate a business, don't manage finances, don't manage your books, don't manage cash flow, don't know how to build a real business. This is your primer on how to build a real business because this is why in the corporate papers, I tell you, you're not quitting your job no time soon. Your job is to create income so you can have a place to stay, so you have food to eat. Your business income should go back into the business to grow the business quicker and bigger, faster. That's how you build a business. And in the corporate papers, once again, if you bought the corporate toolbox uh, this week, today, I'm going to do, I'm going to start the YouTube training because uh, with the marketplace dynamics, I kind of touched on YouTube. So for the people in the corporate toolbox, you're going to get that free. And for the people who buy the corporate papers, I'm going to give you a deal. I haven't really 
flesh that out. I'm going to work that out in the next few days. So if you want to get in the corporate papers, go below, use promo code August to get in the corporate papers and to begin to build your corporate entity. Because I teach you how to set up a holding company. I teach you how to set up an operating company. But more importantly, I teach you how to get customers. Because a business without customers ain't no business. So that's all I got for you guys today. Link is below. I will see you guys in the next one.